Hey guys, welcome back to our series of event driven microservices using Spring Cloud Stream and Apache Kafka. So in the previous videos, we have created some microservices which communicates with message. So we have Apache Kafka as our streaming or messaging middleware system. And our customer microservice is publishing some messages to an Apache Kafka topic. In the other side, we have our decision microservice, which consumes from Apache Kafka topic. So far, so good, guys. Now, the question is, how do we test our Spring Boot event-driven microservice? Of course, there are different approaches that one can take, but as professionals, we should choose the more mature solution. But first, let's take a look at our problems. So the first thing is that we want to be sure that the message has the expected format. For example, Avro, JSON or Proto buffers. We could think, for example, using the schema registry, but it just covers the schema or message format and structure. Nothing else. If you understand what is schema registry, you understand what I'm talking about. So the other thing is we want to be sure that our Spring Boot Event Driven Microservice is consuming from the correct topic or queue if you are not using, for example, Apache Kafka, right? And also, let's suppose that we have here, right, our decision microservice, which is consuming, right, from a Kafka topic. But let's suppose if we have uh, to make this uh, test and we have more than one microservice. So how can we test all this integration? The first thing maybe we could, for example, deploy all the seven services, right? In a, let's suppose, test environment. But, you know, it's very hard, right? To create some environment for testing like this. And the other approach will be, for example, yeah, we could uh, mock all the data, but mocking all the data can be painful for us, right? Because we are developers and we understand how hard is mocking the data and also what if the mock data have nothing to do with the reality right this is a big problem so we have here a lot of situations so in that order let's take a look for some testing strategies right so for example we can see here we have unit testing which it's not okay the case we cannot use unit testing in order to test these components that are communicating with events integration testing it's interesting, but yeah, integration testing, but how can we do integration testing? We are talking about even driven microservices, right? They communicate through a pipe or messaging system. And we have here also component testing. Mm, obviously, it's not the component testing. And next we have contract testing, something different here. So let's take a look what Spring Boot or Spring Cloud have to offer about this contract testing. So after searching, I came across with Spring Cloud Contract, which is a Spring Boot project, okay? But before talking about Spring Cloud Contract, let's talk about a concept called by consumer-driven contracts. So what is consumer-driven contracts? Consumer-driven contracts is just a testing approach where the consumers of a service define the expectations. So our consumer microservice, they are defining the expectations and requirement for the service that they are consuming, okay? In the other hand, we have the providers. So the providers are the responsible to ensure that the service meet these expectations. Using consumer-driven contract helps in achieving compatibility and reliability in distributed system. So it promotes collaboration and clear communication between services, providers, and consumers. So we have here a contract where one say the expectations and the other ensure those expectations. Okay? So this is the concept of consumer-driven contract pattern. Now, going back to our Spring Cloud contract, 
Now we can understand that Sprinkler contract, it's a Spring Boot project, but it helps developers to implement the consumer-driven contract approach. So Spring Cloud Contract is just a framework, right? So the other advantage of using Spring Cloud Contract is the fact that it ensures the compatibility and it prevents integration issues. So I know that talk is cheap and we have to show the code in order to understand better this concept. So in that order, Let's jump to our code. Let's create first our producer and our contracts. As we can see here, the Spring Cloud Contract Verifier, we, are, we will understand also what is Spring Cloud Contract Verifier, moves the test-driven development to the level of software architecture. So I'm talking too much. Let's jump to the code. Let's create first our producer and we will be back soon. Let's go. So guys, now we are here on our IntelliJ. As we can see, we have here our customer microservice, which is the one that produces events or messages to Apache Kafka topic. So, as always, the first thing that we are going to do is getting the Spring Cloud contract dependencies. So, in that order, let's go to Maven repository and let's get the Maven dependency for Spring Cloud contract. So now we are here on Maven repository. Let's get the dependency. Let's go back to our IntelliJ. On our POM XML, we are going to paste the dependency. Maybe you are using Gradle, but it's the same. Now that we have here our dependency, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add here on the build section, in the plugin section, we are going to add another plugin which correspond for Spray Cloud Contract. So this is the plugin, okay, for Spring Cloud Contract. As we can see, the plugin is Spring Cloud Contract Maven plugin. Now that we have hit here, we need to add some configurations. So the first configuration that we are going to add is the testing framework. So for our testing framework, we are going to use the JUnit 5 framework. So having here the JUnit 5 as a framework, now the next thing that we can do, for example, uh, is by uh, using, let's suppose, um, the naming uh, suffix for our test. Okay, later you are going to understand. So in that order, let's use like this. So let's just follow the convention, okay? Let's use as integration test case, okay? So IT, which correspond integration test case, okay? And yeah, the next thing that we have to do is we, we have to provide the package which contains the base classes. Base classes are the class that we are going to use as our base testing class. So as we can see, we have here two options. We can use the package with base classes or base package for tests. So in our case, we are going to use the package with base classes. And later I will explain the difference between both of them. In that order, we are going to provide here the package with base classes. So before providing, let's go here on our resource, not, not here, but here on our test. and. Yes, yeah, on our test and let's create, okay, one more class, one more package, okay, which in our case, we are going to call it by contracts, okay. So now having here the contract, we can just copy the reference and let's paste it here. So as we click here, we can see that we are going to be moved, okay, to the correct package with base classes. And yes, you can keep playing with some other configurations as always. For example, uh, in my case, I like to put the fail on no contract, okay? Because for example, if you are using Spring Cloud contracts, that means that you gotta have some contracts, right? So we are going to fail if we are using Spring Cloud contract and you have not the contracts. So I put it as true. 
So having it like that, okay, we have here our plugin, okay, and we can now move to our next step.